I know you guys have been waiting for this one for a little while, but uh, on today's episode, we're going to go over the 200 series. I'm just going to show you all the differences, the changes, how they started and how they ended, how they make them better. And uh, yeah, stay along for the ride. So 1975, when they introduced the lineup of these, you could get the 200 through 216s, which, what makes each one special? Well, the 200, they only made for one year. About 25,000 of them were produced because it had an 8-horse Kohler in it, which wasn't enough power. I mean, it was good enough for a 110, but when you're buying that kind of money, you want more power in it. It'll work on maybe a quarter acre a lot, sure. But it just wasn't uh, powerful enough to throw snow or do what you needed it to do. So your other option, other than 1975, was the only year you could get a 200. And it came with side panels. Well, they went with the economy version, 208. Yeah, economy. That means failure, in my opinion, because anything they did didn't work. It didn't come with side panels. It came with skinnier front wheels, skinny rear wheels. It was, I mean, stripped down, bare bones, didn't even come with a variator on it. It's a variator delete, literally two pulleys. It's either in or out. No adjustment, no fanciness of the variator system that is on a John Deere. Again, without side panels, they had their own heat shield, which this one is missing. But that's what I was told the difference is what. They made these in 76 and 77. So that was it. The two-year production of the 208, because again, with an 8-horse, nobody wanted it. But that's the only way you can tell between the 76 and 77 is the PTO heat shield covers are different by just a couple of machined uh, fins into them. This one is missing. I don't really care to look for it, I guess, as it is a harder piece to find. Maybe one day I'll recreate it for fun. But uh, everybody likes the earlier style. 208s for some reason. The next step you could get is a 210, which came with an 8 horse Kohler, the K241, I believe it was, which is one of the most popular ones built. You can find 210s literally everywhere. This is again one of the early ones with a mesh um, side panels. In came with the older style decals on it, but was made all the way through Tiger Stripes with electric PTO. Again, one of the most common. Tractors there is very well built, very stout, put in the power that he needed to. Kind of a lesser popular one actually is the 212. You can't find very many of these, which were again built through all the years, had all the options on them. Came with a K301, I tested my knowledge on this, uh Kohler K series in it. 12 horse, if you didn't want that, you could jump up to the 14 horse, which is actually the more popular one in my opinion. A little bit more power, a little more grunt, same kind of energy. And I think with the cost of it, really, probably would have been an extra $100, $200 between the two when optioning them. But I guess if that wasn't enough for you, you'd come all the way to a 216, which is really a lot of power. To me, they go through head gaskets pretty crazy. It's a lot of thumping power, vibration. Uh, kind of a little bit one harder to find. They didn't make it as many years, and so the value on them. Everybody likes a 16 horse, I guess. They want to pull it out, use it for pulling. So if you got a 216 and it survived, take care of it. Use the power that it manages. So starting in 1975, they issued these style decals, which is the older style decals, and they actually only lasted until about 1978, 1979. They were only there for a few years. Actually, on the 400s, they changed a year earlier than the 200 and 300 series lineup to what we call them as the Tiger Stripe uh, look, which is would be on your later 4440s. Again, they only used the old style for a couple years, and then they continued to use this all the way into the 90s, actually. This is what you'll commonly see on your 420, 430s, uh, all your larger, newer 80s tractors. All this, uh, Most of the 300 series would have them. But they also changed the styling of the side covers. It's somewhere in there they did the mesh screens, and apparently that was too costly, and they only did them for a couple of years like that. 
before they switch to the bar screens, which can be found on the older style decals, whether they were put on there from the factory like that a year or two before they went to Tiger Stripe or they uh, were swapped on there at some point like that. Well, that's not the only changes they made. Your next step was the grills, actually. They had a cheaper mesh grill on all of them versus the bar grill. This one is missing the emblem, but usually would have the emblem bolted on there. But it's just cheaper manufacturing. It was something easier. It's what they could build better, faster. Honestly, I think it looks a little bit better. But again, more changes came along. You redesigned the entire steering wheel, so it's a completely new design and concept with the new logo involved. And then they integrated all the switches, lights, handles, color-coded so that you can match them to their significance, being yellow is the PTO lever, orange with the throttle, and orange on the gear shifter, which even opening up a hole into the gear shifter for better replacement of the shift the uh, quadrants and the control of where they go into. It's not just find a gear, it helps you find the gear. See how this is perfectly cut out around that square piece for the uh, quadrant selector to help you get into gear. They then went to a more open style that needs a plastic cover. But the fun part is what's under the plastic cover and why they put it there which is on this one, which is missing one because they're very common to break. This is what's under here is just it's more open area. Why they did that, I really don't know. Maybe it was for easier access to reach in, help change the belts, adjust linkages or wiring. But your plastic cover goes over that and they're very common to break. But again, they didn't stop there. They went from manual PTO, which actually lasted quite a few years into the Tiger Stripes, all the way to an electric PTO switch, which came in about 1983-84, which would have been halfway through the production of the Tiger Stripes, per se. But again, they updated even more. <laughs> they changed, we'll look at this front wheel. Some of the front wheels, are bolted on the end of the spindle, which means they've got American bearings and an American sized one inch spindle. While the later ones come with a plastic cap that if you get it off, there's a snap ring in there. And then they change to metric bearings. So if you try to swap an American bearing onto a metric spindle, it'll have some slop, but it also won't fit. So if you throw a metric onto an American, it, it will be very loose fitting you'll have to swap the bearings around find the right bearing they change the rims just enough that you can't swap the bearings all of them it just it was a mess it made stuff very complicated but that's just with each year that you can figure out if you've got an early 200 series it'll have the older decals if it's a really early one mesh grill screens and then switch to the bar grills in the later years all the way to the even later years of electric pto which are the desirable ones to find Well, only you could be lucky enough to get a 280. Never heard of it? Well, we're gonna go over it quick for you. Why did I make a 218, perhaps? Well, because they never made one, and for good reason, actually. Uh, as far as I have been told, this is one of maybe three or four in the country that have been attempted successfully, I guess. Uh, there's one guy out in Mass that made a pulling 218. But uh, essentially what makes a 218 a 218 is the only K-Series Kohler overhead valve 18 horse uh, cast iron block engine that was made for actually only two years because they had a common problem of dropping valve seats because they didn't get enough oil supply up to the rockers. The head would get too hot. The valve train would break and or drop valve seats out of the head because it would get too hot. That's because they left the normal breathing tube down low, which I had to cap and move it up to on top of the valve cover so that they could breathe the oil up here. The oil pressure, natural pressure of the engine blows it up here so this stuff can get lubricated. They didn't do that. So that's why this is a failed engine after two years. 
until they came back out with the aluminum block and your normal overhead valve engine that we all know today that actually isn't bad but again if it gets too hot sticks push rods or bend valves and all that jazz kind of the same issue so you got to make sure you keep them clean you got to keep them lubricated and simplest little things can help them last longer uh i only did this because i thought it was a pretty good challenge i grabbed hold of an overhead valve 18 horse k361 out of a power king they were used in power king errands uh i guess maybe the new holland lawn tractor here or there on some gen sets but we're never really popular at all again they only build them for two years so deer never grabbed hold of them because they were an unsuccessful engine grabbed the one out of a power king i had to make an oil pan adapter uh, to shrink the oil pan down from the wider standard size so that it could fit down into the standard 200 series motor mounts after we did that modified the exhaust so that it would work and actually was able to fit electric pto in it so that it actually fully functions and i could do something with it if this actually was good at something again if i knew how crappy this motor is i'll be blunt about it i would never do it again uh it does make a cool talkative piece people question all the time when did they make it to 18? They never made that. Or would you engine swap it or something? I was like, no, I tried making it as factory as possible as I did on this side with the heat shield. It looks exactly the same as any normal 200 series. I was able to fit a 200 series muffler down in there, full electric PTO, everything, the heat shield. It all somehow fits. Whether it actually works, yeah, supposedly. So you throw the side panels on there, you don't know the difference. So it was just kind of that weird side project that nobody else has. Nobody else is probably going to do, have the knowledge to do, or, well, in my case, want to do ever again. Uh, yeah, so that was my own little contraption. So, yeah, they only made the 200, 208, 210, 212, 214, 216, and I've got one of the only 218s there are physical evidence of around. And with that, I know the 200 series are very popular, uh, especially through the younger crowd as your first cheap lawn tractor. I won't call it a lawnmower, I swear. It is a lawn tractor. They do put in a lot of effort. They're very popular with sleeve hitches, front blades, snow blowers. It works. They are capable machines. But once you hit the 300 series and can afford them and maybe get the diesels, you don't want to go back. You just don't. <laughs> but I know it's a popular machine for all of you. So I figured I would go over them. I'd show you the basics of what they did between each of the years. All the differences between them. Any comments, questions, or concerns. You can follow me up. I'm on TikTok. Don't be afraid to add me on Snapchat. I know some people find me on Facebook. I've got two Instagram accounts. So go out. Find me. Question me. I'll try to make a video as best I can describing them. And uh, don't forget to like and follow this video. Happy Tractory.